there welcome to my channel my name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen video back in January 2022 I announced that I had reached the milestone of 1 million views with my YouTube channel my pen friend and fellow Canadian fountain pen reviewer doodlebud released a video just last week where he very kindly celebrated my achievement by making me a custom ground cursive italic nib and sending it to me attached to this awesome fully when 017 fountain pen he sent it with a lovely personal love letter which I will share with all of you right now <laughs> So I was surprised the other day when Doodlebud did a video in which he gifted a pen and a custom grind nib to me uh, in celebration of my 1 million views on my channel. And the package arrived the same day uh, in the mail. So he timed that very, very nicely. Thank you so much, Doodlebud, for your generosity. Uh, terrific video, by the way. He did mention in the video and a comment that he wanted me to open the letter live on camera so I had to keep the package sealed for a whole day because I was working on some other videos uh, but uh, here it is now and I'm going to open it right away so there's the pen and here is the letter let's take a look at the letter first since he peeked at the seal there's his seal i think his d is backwards doodle bud march 8th so here we go my dearest doug i hope this pen finds you well and that you are staying warm on these cold and dark calgary winter nights may this pen and nib grind bring you brief moments of joy between the endless shoveling of snow <laughs> little does he know i have my neighbor do it keep your spirits high is that a reference to cannabis i'm not sure but all you need is a bag of weed to really get a kick a bag of weed a bag of weed everything is better with a bag of weed is the only help that you'll ever need because everything is better with a bag of weed only three or four more months and summer will arrive you'll once again get to enjoy a cool drink on your patio surrounded by the warm glow from your citronella candles watching the dazzling light show from the bug zapper <laughs> well in calgary we don't have that many bugs it's quite nice actually i can almost hear the soothing sound of each mosquito falling one by one zzz, damn it zzz, zzz, zap <laughs> doodle bud thank you so much my friend and let's see well here's the writing sample he did and his favorite saying his favorite saying to hate it's always the last place you look yeah i hope so this is where i got confused when he wrote architect i thought this was going to be an architect grind it's actually a cursive italic and here's the pen in a nice velvet in a nice felt sleeve from lammy that's interesting because i have a fake lammy right here that i can put right into that sleeve i have a real lammy on the way and here's the pen there we go yeah that's a beauty i have one that i did a review it's a fully 017 and this one is in the blue danube color and it has a medium fully when nib and uh, it's a beautiful pen and this one but it's really chatoyant look at that beautiful greens and yellows and purples and of course that lovely snake roll stop that comes right off yeah those threads aren't so bad doodle bud and here is the nib and it was a fully win medium that he ground into a cursive italic i'll have to try that out and he's left the pen inked as an extra surprise terrific and here we go yeah, no ink spilled out during the mailing process and here we have the fully when 017 but it is a cursive italic
custom doodle bud grind look at that it's juicy it is got a nice cursive italic to it and smooth very nice boy that's a pleasure to write with thank you again so much it's very much appreciated so i thought about doing a review of this fully when 017 quicksand and this beautiful custom ground cursive italic nib uh, but i've already done a review of the fully when 017 with my blue danube model and doodlebutt did such a good job of going over the pence features in his video uh, that I thought I would do something slightly different. I'll link his video in my description below. And besides, it's the nib here that is special. So I decided I would show you how this cursive italic nib writes and do a few samples and showing the difference between some of these special nib grinds and shapes. For instance, what's the difference between a cursive italic and a stub nib? Well, that's a good question. And so I'm going to demonstrate the differences uh, between some nib grinds and shapes in what I like to call the lazy man's calligraphy. I fell in love with these different nib shapes that give your writing character instantly without any classes or YouTube study videos. You see, real calligraphy takes practice, study, and patience. But people want instant results, instant gratification, and instant satisfaction, like me. That's where these special nib shapes and grinds are perfect, for the lazy calligrapher. Admit it, you're a lazy calligrapher. Dip, 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 dip. Peter, it's four in the morning. Come to bed. Marital concerns continue to bedevil me. And there are several from which to choose. So I'm going to put them into three basic categories. Obliques, architects, and stubs. Oh my. <laughs> oh my. And one extra category, which I like to call slightly bent. I'm going to draw a diagram for each category as I'm a visual learner. First let's look at stub. Here's a stub nib from the top view. And here it is from the front. You can see that the nib is cut horizontally which gives it the characteristic broad vertical stroke and thin horizontal stroke. The second category is architect and we're going to draw a diagram of the bottom of the nib I'm terrible at this and side view it kind of looks like this it has this flat space along here on that angle and the bottom of the nib is cut on the vertical rather than on the horizontal giving it its characteristic thin vertical line and thick horizontal line. I should go back and put this stub in. Thin horizontal, thick vertical. So you can consider an architect like the opposite of a stub. And let's do a close-up of a stub. This is a 1.1 stub from Leonardo. And there it is from the top from the side and from the bottom and then from tip on and now let's get a close-up of the architect this is a Leonardo broad nib that I had custom ground into an architect by Jack Hernandez there it is from the top from the side from the bottom you can see that long vertical slit and try to do it from the there you see that slit and my third category is oblique the tines on the oblique are cut on the bias in one slant or the other here's a top view of a normal nib there's sort of a ball on the top 
of the tipping material. Always looks rather rude when you make these. What is it, son? I don't know, sir. But it looks like a giant... Wang! Pay attention! I was distracted by that enormous flying... Willie! Yeah. What's that? Well, it looks like a giant... Johnson! Yes, sir! Get on the horn to British intelligence and let them know about this. And you have this ball of tipping material. But what they do with an oblique is you take that round ball and you cut it either on the left slant or on the right slant like that. And this would be a left foot right here and this would be a right foot oblique. The oblique gives more subtle line width variation than stubs and italics because the broadest stroke is the upper left to lower right diagonal or vice versa. They also tend to have a sweet spot because you need to rotate the nib towards your thumb to get the writing surface on the page properly. If you write this way naturally, like I do, you might feel like, wow, Eureka, I found the perfect nib. But most people tend to think these are a pain in the butt to write with. And let's get a close up of this Lamy Studio 14 karat gold oblique medium. You can see those tines are cut on the bias right there. And there it is from the side. Beautiful nib, actually. And the fourth category, which I call slightly bent. And this is where the tip, looking at side view here, the tip and the nib is bent up like that. So when it's on the page, it has that slight bend to it. And here is the bent nib on my Schaefer Icon. This pen did not come with this nib, but I put it in. This is a bobby bent nib. That tip only has been bent at an angle. So when you're writing at angle to the page, that flat spot on the bottom of the nib comes in contact with the paper. So you might say, but professor, you didn't say anything about cursive italics. And you'd be right. The confusing thing here is that there are shades of gray in almost all of these categories. And a cursive italic, or just a plain italic nib, is just a sharp stub. So what is the difference between a cursive italic and a stub nib? Well, the definitive answer to that question is that it definitely depends. And that's my answer, and I'm sticking to it. So your follow-up question is going to be, so what does it depend on, oh Professor Mio? And the answer to that question is, well, it depends on who is asking and to whom you are speaking. And there you have it, clear as mud. Now that I have that out of the way, we can talk off the record. Don't quote me on any of this. The real poop on this is that it's really subjective and also has to do with marketing and linguistics. It is subjective because stubs are italics and italics are stubs. But there is a range between a true crisp italic and the smoothest roundy stub you can find. And roundy is a technical term that we professionals use. It's complicated. So broadly speaking, all stubs and italics behave this way. They give you thin horizontal lines and thicker vertical lines because the nibs are shaped like this. They're chopped off on the horizontal and they look like this from the end on. But how they are chopped off and ground is the spectrum between an ultra smooth stub and an extra crispy italic paper shredder. A true italic is razor sharp on these edges right here. And they give a wide variety of line variation, but can actually slice your paper into shreds. However, when you round off these edges, you take the stub and you round off these edges here like that to make it more forgiving as you move left and right and up and down. It reduces the line variation, but you gain from a smooth writing experience. And therein lies the subjectivity. Is it a stub or a cursive italic? And to complicate matters, pen companies are notoriously random about their usages. Some companies call their nibs stubs, some call them italics, some call them both. But generally, most italic nibs 
available commercially, that is, not custom ground, are stubs because most people can't write with a true italic anyway. And if a company sold a true italic, they'd be getting lots of returns because people can't write with them. Well, ordinary people. So a true stub, let's do another diagram. A true stub nib, let me write with a stub. So a true advertised stub nib, like this one right here from Leonardo, is shaped like this. And you can see that right there, how it's got that round character to it. There, you can see it right there. It has that roundish character to it. And it ends up being very, very smooth. This is like butter, this 1.1 stub. Again, thin horizontals, thick verticals, but very, very smooth. So that's a stub. In fact, most nibs that even claim to be cursive italics are actually stubs, but just not as rounded as stubs. Here's what's advertised as a broad cursive italic nib from italics. It's an amazingly smooth and wide stub. It's actually an oblique stub, a left-hand oblique stub from Mr. Penn. Mr. Penn advertises this as a cursive italic, but it's incredibly smooth and buttery, just like the Leonardo stub. I don't know that there's a pen manufacturer that actually sells a pen with a true italic nib. They'd be so sharp and difficult to use, customers would really care about it. Oh. oh, I can't even talk to you when you're like this. Oh, okay. It's over now because you say it is. Oh, way to go, Karen. You solved all our problems by just walking away. But what Doodlebud has made for me can be classified as a cursive italic because it lands on the italic end of the stub spectrum and looks more like this. I'm going to do the end view here. So what Doodlebud has done here is he's rounded it, but not quite to the very, very roundy kind of character of a stub like on the Leonardo. This one has rounded edges, but not quite so rounded. So it gives you a crisper line on the page, but still that characteristic horizontal thin, vertical thick. A lot more feedback than on the Leonardo but still very pleasant. He's done a very good job on this nib. So Doodlebud made this cursive italic out of a fully wen medium nib. Here's a fully wen medium in my blue Danube. And if I close up on the two nibs, you'll see how he ground the top and the bottom off of the tipping material from that medium. And then he squared it off. Then he rounded the edges until it was writable. He left the width and ground it narrower top and bottom to give it a wide vertical stroke and a thin horizontal. I've measured this nib at the tip and it is one millimeter. Now with the architect category. There are shades of gray here too. Here's a close-up of my favorite architect nib, a Leonardo Broad that I had Jack Hernandez cut into an architect. This is the nib that makes the inquiring minds at the beginning of my videos. And you can start to play with the thickness of that slit, the vertical slit, by widening it out slightly at the bottom. This is what creates the subcategories of architect grinds called variably Zoom, Naginata, Togi, and Calligraphy. Oh joy, subcategories. Pen nerds that get their pen panties in a twist about the nuance, nomenclature, and semantics, and geeky technical jargon bullshit will argue at length at pen shows about these various terms, but that's why they always miss the really cool parties. The Sailor Zoom and the Sailor Naginata Togi are architect-like nibs in that they have long vertical slits, but the writing area is shaped differently and sometimes resembles a pear shape. The Zoom nib does what you'd expect it to do. When you are holding your pen vertical to the page, it gives you a thin line. But as you increase the angle of the pen to the page, the line gets thicker. This is not doing it because this is an architect. But the higher the nib is to the page, the thinner the line, and the lower it is, the thicker the line is. But there's no variation with the zoom nib. The Naginata Togi is like a combination of the zoom and the architect, as it will get thinner, and thicker depending on your angle of the pen to the page, but also has a good amount of line variation between the horizontal 
and the vertical lines, like an architect. I don't have either a Naginata Togi or a Zoom, but I do have a Pen BBS Calligraphy number one, which behaves very similar to similar, so only similar to a Naginata Togi. When I'm vertical like this, I get a thin line and I go to 60 degrees and I go to 45 degrees and I go to 30 degrees and you can see the lines getting thicker but also at a standard writing angle I get a vertical like that and a horizontal like that so it's giving me lots of line variation in all the directions and if we close up on this nib you can see that vertical slit like on the architect but it's pear-shaped it ends up being wider at the bottom and there they are next to each other you can see the difference in those nibs and finally without getting into the entire territory of food a nibs we have the category i call slightly bent i just wanted to show a bent nib to demonstrate how easy it is to get some line character into some of the most boring nibs on the planet namely hooded nibs. The most boring nib put into any pen, in my opinion, is the nail they put into these hooded nib pens, even the Parker 51 gold nib. So that's why I dislike them so much. Yes, that's past tense, because now I love hooded nib pens, like my Schaefer Icon, my Wingsung 601A Flighter, my Moonman TI-200 Titanium, plus these wonderful, inexpensive Wingsung 618 Piston Fillers. I've replaced all of those hooded nibs with a bobby bent nib. Again, there are shades of gray here too. Bent nibs are usually called fude nibs. They're used to write Eastern language calligraphy like hanji or kanji for the Chinese and Japanese languages respectively. If you take the tip of a normal fountain pen and apply a pair of pliers just to the tip and bend it up, you'll end up writing with the underside of the nib slit. When it is just the tip that is bent rather than the end of the tines, you'll get a mini fude or Waverly style upturned nib, like this Bobby Bent nib on my Schaefer icon. It gives some subtle character to the lines. You get a slightly thicker line horizontally than you do vertically. Instant line character. And the Schaefer icon is a hundred times better than it was because of it. Now, if you drastically bend the end of those tines on a normal nib, you'll get a fude, which makes it feel more like a paintbrush and is really conducive to the writing of Hanji and Kanji characters. And then I thought to myself, hell, if Bobby can make a bent nib, so can I. So I took a generic number six size Chinese steel nib and ground the bottom of the nib so that the tipping material was flat. Then I took my pliers and I bent the tip up. You can see it's slightly raised, just slightly. Then after going through micro mesh grits from 1800 to 12,000, I ended up with what amounts to a homemade zoom nib. So vertically, I get a thin line. It starts getting thicker and thicker and thicker. So a homemade zoom. Look at that line variation. Of course, there's no line variation when you hold the angle normally, but still, you can get a thick line when you need one. When you want to go bold, it's bold. When you want to go thin, it's thin. So not too bad for my first custom grind and a pair of pliers. And there you have it. Thanks go out to my pen friend Doodlebud for this amazing gift pen and custom cursive italic nib. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And you can join as a member of my channel as well for only 99 cents a month. And I guarantee I will answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis and badges. Plus now I'm providing unboxing videos as I get new pens exclusively for members only. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.